A network of knowledge is valued by publishing a research paper with integrity. According to Shihan 2005, a survey has been conducted on a group of researchers, and 17% of the researchers said that they personally know that the misconduct happened in their research field for more than 10 years. And the publication misconduct that the researchers may commit include fabrication, falsification, and plagiarism. Data fabrication is the making up of the data and research findings, while data falsification involves changing or omitting data to give a false impression. Plagiarism involves the use of another person's idea without acknowledging the, the person. Hence, in this presentation, we will present to you a real issue about a researcher that has committed several misconduct in his research. So our group will be focusing on Vishwa Jeep Gupta. Gupta was a fraud Indian geologist from Punjab University specializing in fossils of Himalayan region. Surprisingly, his fraud researches managed to be published by Nature between 1964 and 1967. Nature is one of the top journals in the world known for its truth regulation, but Gupta fraud managed to pass this somehow. There are few crooked things that were did by Gupta. First, he faked his findings. For example, in one of his articles in Nature, he claimed to found the first graptolites in Himalayan region. However, this fraud began to expose itself when another researcher, Professor John Talon, made a visit there. He searched Gupta claim area and found nothing or anything similar to graptolites. Only rocks with different age were found there. Professor John also said that with the extreme condition of Himalayan region, it is impossible for the graptolites to survive there. Then, Gupta also claimed to discover conodon and ammonoids at Himalayan region. Further inspection from others found out that the claimed conodon has too much similarity and look alike with the conodon found from quarry deposit in Amstel Creek, New York. Meanwhile, the ammonoid looks similar to the one in Morocco, having shiny reddish black appearance. However, the Himalayan ammonite were not supposed to have that characteristics because of the extreme cold temperature. The appearance happened because of weathering effects in tropical region. Next, Gupta also tricked other researchers to join or help him in his fraud. The other researchers sadly never knew it was a fraud when being asked by him. For an instance, in the case of Gupta fossil's fish skull, Gupta gave this fossil to a researcher and tricked him that it could be a new species. The researcher agreed to join due to being excited. In reality, the fossil was actually a fish commonly found in China. Gupta bought it when he visited China prior to this. There are various factors which contribute to the arising of this issue. Firstly, absence of statutory body to monitor and deal with matters related to scientific misconduct in India. This allowed those researchers, including Gupta, to plagiarize their works without being realized by other people. Secondly, to secure a higher position in institution for own satisfaction. As a proof, he managed to become the youngest professor at Punjab University at the age of 36 years old after having written 450 scientific papers for the past 25 years. Next, enjoying fame acquired at a very young age. At the age of 22 years old, Gupta was given a chance to collaborate with other researchers in writing a paper for the well-known science journal entitled Nature. He also had been appointed as a delegate for international scientific conferences after the Punjab University had awarded him with a doctoral degree in 1966. Besides, availability of software which aided to conceal and fabricate findings, Gupta was able to convince other researchers about his false fossils until he managed to publish a lot of papers related to the Himalayas fossils which actually belong to other regions. Lastly, unaware of possible penalties of involving in research misconduct. Thus, he might think that all of his actions were just minor mistakes, but actually it was really bad and embarrassing, since he was an intellectual individual which should be a good example to the others. The implication of the issue include the researchers who have worked with Gupta on the false studies were investigated, even though they claim that they are also deceived by Gupta lies. It is responsible for a researcher to confirm the details and information of their studies. Then, numerous scientific reports written by Gupta 
on the finding of fossils in the Himalayan region caused high damage on the geology studies of Himalayan. The false recorded data have been referred by many other researchers and causes their studies to have limitation and uncertainty in the results. And all group towers on fossil studies have become waste and were ignored as it gives no benefit toward readers and researchers. What can we learn from this incident as a future scientist? First, honesty and integrity are the two elements that need to be instilled in our soul. We have to be honest when conducting our research and always thin the impact of our act to everyone if we are committing fraud. From the incident, Gupta's dishonesty about his so-called findings has spread false information to many people. Second, do not practice plagiarism by admitting others' words as ours or stealing their words without giving credits to them. From the incident, Gupta admits that the posse he took from the museum or other teaching resources as his own discoveries made from Himalayas. Next, learning and gaining new knowledge during research is more profitable instead of lying on something that we never did or find out. If we choose to commit fraud just for money and fame, then it will not last longer. From the incident, Gupta is no longer able to involve in the research field due to trust issues after his fraud has been exposed. Finally, based on Gupta's incident, it is important for us to choose the right partner in writing papers so that we will not get involved in spreading false information without we notice it. To conclude, research misconduct can be resolved by educating authors who are less familiar with ethical aspects in publication. In this case, Gupta may not know the impact that he might face. And as mentioned in the introduction, there are some researchers that know the misconduct happened surrounding them, but they do not know how to react to that or they do not know what action should be, should be taken. On top of that, the importance of preventing research misconduct is to keep a high standard of research publication in order to sustain the author's credibility so their hard work will be paid off. Lastly, the integrity value of a researcher is what keeps the dissemination or the continuation or the spreading of a true knowledge. And as a Muslim, integrity value is important and should be presented in our way of life. That's all from us. Thank you.